So I was out for a run the other day, and I habitually carry a pocket knife with me everywhere I go, including when I'm running, because uh, you just never know when you're going to need a knife. And I also habitually keep my knives very, very sharp, and somehow my knife came open, and I, I have this water bottle carrier that I wear, uh, and carry a water bottle with, and the knife came open and went right through. Rather than just sew a quick repair or put some kind of a patch on this, I decided instead I'm going to seam rip this apart, take this whole panel with the zipper off, use it as a pattern to make a new one, and essentially rebuild at least this part of this water bottle carrier. So let's see how that goes. I started by seam ripping the pocket assembly off of the carrier. I only really needed to replace the front panel, but I decided to make a new back panel while I was at it. And I used some of my black 400 denier nylon pack cloth for that because I have a whole bunch of it. I used the existing back panel as a template, just placing it on the material and tracing around it with Taylor's chalk. Oh, those metal things are fabric pattern weights, and before you ask, I bought them used and I don't know where you can find them. You're a good boy. Next, I turned my attention and my seam ripper to the front panel pieces. This was tedious work, but I didn't want to tear the pieces as I needed to use them as templates and I was reusing the zipper. By seam ripping everything apart, I was able to replicate the pieces accurately without having to guess at the seam allowances. Bobbin, the black cat, is always happy to lend a hand, but his sister, Coquina, apparently thought I needed even more help. I just thought this was interesting. There are tons and tons and tons of holes in some sections here just because you know, they basted this to another part and then sewed something else on top of that and then folded over and top stitch or whatever series of events happened. But um, some of you may be familiar with the, the perforation problem and this is a pretty good example of a whole lot of holes being punched in this material. However, I've owned this pack since 2007 and I've used it pretty regularly. I've used other uh, bottle carriers, and it's not like I run every single day or anything. But I've used it a lot, and this has never been a problem. And the only reason this failed is because my knife poked a hole through the, the body of the bag. So it's not really an issue necessarily, but it is interesting just how holy this is. I had a scrap of 1.1 ounce silicone impregnated nylon in my stash, so I used that for the front panel. Chalk doesn't mark this stuff well, so I used a Sharpie. This is fine because the marks are all cut lines and won't be visible in the finished product. I was careful to match up the new pieces to the old pieces to make sure I got everything oriented correctly before sewing it together. Despite this, I am making a significant mistake here. I'll explain it at the end of the video. By the way, I sped this part up because it's kind of boring to watch, but I think this is important. It took me about three full minutes just to sew this seam. Taking your time to get it right is faster than sewing, seam ripping, and sewing again.
The seam between the pocket and the zipper was bound in the original item, so I duplicated that. I mounted my 1 inch swing away binder and bound the seam with 1 inch Milspec 5038 Grosgrain ribbon. More on binding later. Next I top stitched the seam. I duplicated the process for the bottom piece. So now I'm ready to sew the front part with the zipper onto the new back panel. And uh, this is the old back panel. And when this was made, they put a little clippy thing here to, I presume, clip a car key to. This pouch is so small, I've never bothered clipping anything to this because it's not like my keys are going to go into the bottom of a big backpack or something. So I'm not going to bother putting this in to the new one. Lunch break time. If you live in a part of the world where you can't get Cuban sandwiches, go somewhere where you can. They're so good. I'll get back to you in a minute. After a sandwich delicioso, I clipped the pocket assembly to the front of the carrier and sewed it on. By the way, if you're curious about these clips, Alexander Dyer made a video about them a while back. I'll put a link in the description. So, uh, it's the next day, and uh, yesterday kind of didn't go so well after a point. When I started the repair on this bag, I removed or loosened the binding. There's binding all the way around this uh, exterior seam. And, or there was. Um, so I removed the binding only to the point that I needed to to remove the pocket uh, assembly. And then I was hoping I could just stitch it back down without having to rebind the whole thing. You'll hear this again, but I hate binding. That didn't work out well. Uh, I really couldn't tell you why but it just it wasn't working out so i decided just to remove all the binding and rebind it for those who don't know i sew for a living for a company that makes bags and a lot of what i do day in day out is binding uh, on a cylinder arm machine with a right angle binder i'm definitely more well equipped at work to do this and even then honestly it's a pain in the neck when i did the binding on the zipper attachment uh, with the binder that I have on the Singer 237, it worked fine. It seems like that's the experience I've been having with this binding folder that I have. If I'm doing a relatively short distance, uh, straight and, you know, relatively thin or without a lot of variation in the thickness of the material that I'm binding, it usually goes pretty well. Anything outside of that and I start running into problems. I don't know that I would say that the binding folder that I have is not good. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily a matter of the sewing machine. I actually switched from the 237 to my Sailrite, uh, and that worked a little bit better for a while, but then, um, just, you know, going around corners like this uh, became challenging. Anyway, so I've got to get this bound. I've got this all together, and it looks great, and I'm really happy with it, but if I don't put binding on it, I might as well throw it in the trash and go buy a new one. So I'm going to do it the ugly way. I have this uh, this glue. Actually, this was in a stash of sewing supplies that I inherited from my mom. I don't even know how old this is, but I have tried it and it does work. Uh, so I'm going to lightly glue the binding onto the bag and clamp it in place. Let the glue dry enough so that it's held reasonably firmly in place and then sew it down uh, without using a binding folder. Probably not going to be perfect, but uh, if it works at all, it'll be better than what I've gotten so far.
Yes, I've got the binding done. Um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough uh, for these purposes, I think. So if you don't have a binding attachment for your machine, uh, that is a way you can do it, um, or if your binding attachment isn't working well or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Now I need to reattach the uh, straps that strap the bag to your waist. And there's this little bit of stretchy material here that uh, provides, I guess, a little bit of shock absorption. And the way this was attached is it was zigzag stitched or bar tacked here, and then these two pieces are bar tacked together. So to try to, as closely as possible, replicate how it was constructed, I've switched back to the Singer 237 so I can do the zigzag stitching because my Sailrite is not a zigzag model. And uh, I've said this in other videos, but this is why the Sailrite and this machine are the two that if I had to only have two, these would be the two I would keep because they use the same bobbin. So uh, since I'm going to use the same gray thread that I used on the binding to have a little bit of contrast for the bar tack, um, I just took the bobbin out of the 237, put it in this, I'm ready to go. One other thing I want to mention, just because we're friends, is uh, I think this is the first time I'm going to use size V92 thread in this machine. I only have the gray thread in V92, and generally V69 is considered to be the, the heaviest thread that you should use in a domestic sewing machine, very generally. Um, but uh, I recently read a book in which the author talked about using V92 in a Singer 237 with great success, so I thought I might as well try it. I, this is not an affiliate uh, or advertisement or anything. I don't know this guy at all. Um, he has a fantastic YouTube video or a couple videos uh, about sailing a sailboat to Hawaii, and he wrote a book about it. If you are even remotely interested in sailing or adventure, or if you just appreciate damn good writing, uh, I strongly urge you to check this book out. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I, uh, I don't know if it's available at bookstores or not. Um, really, really good. And he has a pretty cool section uh, in it on soap. And he has a really good section uh, in the book on what he calls sewmanship. Uh, about teaching himself to sew using a Singer 237 to redo a lot of the uh, canvas and upholstery and stuff on his boat. So I think it's worth checking out. Well, it works now, but I think there's one more issue I could probably address. Unless I plan on gaining 100 pounds, I really don't need these straps to be this long, and they've annoyed me since I've owned this thing. So, uh, as I alluded to uh, earlier, I made a pretty big mistake here, but it was a mistake that ended up with the result that I would have chosen had I been thinking about this, uh, but I wasn't, and I made a stupid mistake. Uh, so I don't want to minimize that, like, you know, this is a, a good example of how being confident and proceeding uh, full speed ahead in something can lead you uh, to make mistakes. It could be pretty bad. The mistake I made was I reversed the direction of this zipper. Uh, the way this was made by the manufacturer was the zipper in the closed position was on this end and open on this end. And now it's closed on this side and, and open over here. I didn't realize I made that mistake until I was editing the video for this. I mean, I went through the entire process of making it, trying it on and stuff. Didn't even notice. Now, hopefully if it were more important or a problem, I would have realized it earlier in the process. But if I just now realized that and it was critical and I needed to change it, honestly, I'd throw this in the garbage because I would have to do basically everything I've done completely. The only thing I wouldn't have to do is cut the pieces, uh, you know, make the new pieces. But I would have to take this completely apart again and start over basically from scratch. So, if you're doing something like this, stop and pay attention to every step before you permanently attach anything at least because I mean that would have been a real bummer. As it turns out if I had been thinking about it I would have chosen to reverse the direction of the zipper because I think it's better here and I'll tell you why just for the sake of conversation. Uh, for one thing 
whenever possible, and, and it's not always possible or, or practical, but whenever possible in a piece of gear with a zipper that's being used in some active use, you know, this is going to get bounced around a lot. Uh, I think it's probably not a terrible idea to have the zipper closed in the downward position if it's in an up-down orientation, you know, so if it were a, a vertical orientation, so that if the zipper slider gets jostled uh, by the motion and moves down by gravity, it moves towards closed, doesn't, you know, come open slowly and you lose contents. Now, for a lot of pockets and a lot of gear, that wouldn't make any sense because you'd be opening it from the bottom and stuff would fall out. I'm not saying that it's always the way to go, but in this example, this sits at a bit of an angle and it, you know, could potentially, never has, as long as I've used this, never had the zipper slider move, but it could potentially work its way open and maybe I could lose my wallet or something. So, you know, that's, that's cool. But more importantly, if I want to access, uh, say I have a, a, a gel, uh, an energy gel or, you know, some food or something that I want to have access to, I'm, I usually wouldn't try to get it out from behind me. I would just spin the pack around, open the zipper and reach in. This is my, my right hand is my dominant hand. So it just makes more sense for me to open it that way rather than open it this way and cross my hands or open it for this. It just, this is a much more natural motion for me. So, um, and I do as a, the whole point of this video is because I carry a knife here with me. Um, and if I did need to reach that knife for some reason, pull the pouch around, use my off hand to open the zipper and then use my dominant hand to get the knife out. And I switched knives because this one won't come open uh, by accident. Hi, did you bring me a toy? Did you bring a toy? Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. And if you are, thank you for being a subscriber. And thanks everyone.